G'day Claire's. Kim here. It's great to be back. Uh, what I want to share to you with you today is the torch and kiln 999 fine silver. This one's the sculpting clay. The great part about the sculpting clay gives you a larger even variety of things that you can do. So with the uh, having the sculpting clay you've got some flex to it so if you're actually carving away into some small detail pieces uh, you can get a lot more ability when it's flexible you can use it on any of the cutting machines um, great for doing embossing uh, debossing however which way you would like to use it uh, it's great for that so excellent I'm going to do a basic and this is actually a test strip so if you're brand new to metal clay never done this before this is a little test strip we always suggest that you have and test out before making a really lovely piece and then finding it's broken it failed because you didn't quite understand the length of time in uh, in torch firing so this is a the strip strip card that I use and I use it the same so also it'll let me know to how much is it shrinking when I put it when I put it there how much has it shrunk once it's dried <coughs> that'll also give you a really good indication and uh, and obviously you'll need a roller I use a, a three size three uh, card thickener uh, I use this, a little knife but you can use a, a pick if you choose to your choice um, I love my little pen I've come out with the my um, oil pen that's been out for since over last year now so and it's really fantastic love my oil pen it gets into all those really deep areas when you're doing um, some sort of deep textures and things like that but I also use it just in general it uses less oil and you're really just spreading it on where you need it um, and you just and you clay of the 25 grams here so all this one piece is dry I'll set that aside let me demonstrate on how to roll your clay do you have a little ceramic tile here great um, roll it out onto that you don't have to move it uh, you can just dry it straight on your, your tile so this is how your clay will come I'll just pinch a little bit off just roll that back up and all I'm going to do is just paint the surface a little so I don't have oil over everything so as you can say see that works really really lovely I'm just going to pop that little snake down and it's not very sticky it doesn't stick at all so I'll just roll that out it's as simple as that take off my card thickener and then all I'm doing is cut top down the sides and then you just I just peel that off okay so that is as easy as that pop your your uh, clay back into your packet and then you're good to go for drying now the only thing I tend to do is I, I do flip this around and I always write on the end here so I'll put in 999 and I'll put in T and S so the T stands for torch and the S stands for sculpting so I know exactly if I come back to it later and I find myself um, can't remember what the test piece was because I didn't get around to it then this will give me the opportunity to go oh okay now I know what I'm firing um, how long I've got to have it on for especially if you're using a kiln and you need a you know you to know your temperature for it uh, it's a great way to um, have success in knowing what temperature you use all right so this is going to go into the dryer and uh, we'll be back with you with firing
Right, so here's the equipment you're going to need for torch firing. So I have got a couple of things here, a little extra. You don't have to have them, but if you've got them or you can collect them over time, um, here we go. So with the torch fire, you can use a little ceramic dish, unglazed is, is better, and some carbon. So Roz has the Aussie Middle Clay, the um, premium coconut, activated coconut carbon. Uh, and I would use it in this, obviously on some, some heater blocks. This is like a kiln shelf or any sort of heat block that will take the resistance, that resist from heat. So just pop this aside because today I'm going to show you a little trick of mine. Being a country girl, we tend to do things a little different uh, and, uh, and make it a little bit more convenient, a little easier. Always have yourself a little pot of water around just in case, especially when you've got a flame going. You don't want, you want the opportunity. Quick, put it out. All right, so have that handy. Um, these are nose pliers, round nose pliers. I do that to test my test strip to make sure uh, it will bend so I've got myself a nice centre. So grab yourself a, one, of, one of those. I have some bigger torches and probably sometimes if you've been looking into this for a while you'll notice that they tend to use a smaller torch and you might be asking why such a big torch. Alright so these are available at Bunnings and we've got Bunnings all the way across Australia. So with uh, and which is, is great uh, these are pretty much available all uh, over everywhere. Now, the thing that I liked so much about these um, doesn't really matter what brand uh, uh, it is, as far as the torch heads going. But what we've got here, which is a bonus, is this will allow the air. Uh, it's an air controller. It adjusts, and it allows you a different, different flame. And in the coming months. Uh, and not really not too far away this if you're going to buy a torch this is really really handy this is really what you want uh, for the method I'm going to be teaching in the near future and I'm so looking forward to it. so this is the one I I picked up at Bunnings great little torch so grab yourself one of those and uh, and you'll have that for ages all right so I have my little blocks here now you might ask what and why do I have a stick? <laughs> Alright, so um, you can see here we've got carbon. Well, I put this in my fireplace and this is my big tip for you. For me to go and buy a carbon block, let me grab it. I've got a carbon block, but they're really expensive if you're only starting out. So I've got myself a little a carbon block here. And, uh, and I thought, gee, I want to give this a go. So I gave this a go and I actually found that it was better than my carbon block. So it, all I did was put it in a fireplace, uh, let it get nice red and hot. You can put just a block of timber and cover it completely with alfoil. Pop it straight into the fire and leave it there for about two to three hours, maybe a little longer. And uh, take it out and then you've got yourself a brilliant little carbon block. So that's my tip for you. Uh, those other blocks are quite expensive. So this costs you next to nicks if you're really, you know, you've got yourself running a fire or you're having a barbecue, you know. It's brilliant for it. So that's what I'm going to be firing on today. I also have the kiln blanket here. I just wanted to show you. Now if you're torch firing, there's no problems. Now I've just got the kiln blanket, what we use the kiln blanket for, as I said, if you're just starting out, you can tear a little piece off, you can tear it into little segments, and, uh, but always, you know, when you're tearing it, be careful with it, it is very, very fine glass, and you do need to wear a mask, do it in safety, sometimes I'll take this outside if I really want to pull it all into bits and pieces, uh, I'll take it outside and, and, um, uh, uh, in the fresh air outside away with the mask on and um, but if you want to 
say you want to support a piece, so if you're doing something that rises over, uh, you can use then the kiln blanket uh, to stabilise that. So if we're going to use it on this, then you can sit that and then sit your piece across it to give it some support. So, alright, so let's get started on torch firing. Now with this next stage what we're going to do is I've got my little test strip and it's completely dry so it's all good. Uh, you can check that on a mirror. See if it when it's when the, when your piece when your strip is actually nice and warm, uh, pop it straight onto a mirror. And if there's, uh, you'll see, just give it a quick move, have a look underneath it. If there's any moisture, it's not completely dry right in the center. So pop it back in your dehydrator or whatever you use to dry out your piece. Now I'm just sitting my piece on there like that. I have myself a little stopwatch and we're going to roughly fire, it's a three card thick, I'd probably say around about eight maybe eight minutes. I'm going to turn the overhead light off as well so um, what you're going to do is you really want to see a, a nice pink glow on it. If it starts to frost a little bit or it starts to get this little looks like an ice across the surface then back off your flame you're starting to melt it so just make sure that you don't have that a sheen coming across it when you get that sheen it's just starting to get a little bit too hot back your, back your torch away and you're all good remember that this torch is a bit bigger than the small brulee torches so it's got a little bit more pack to it a little bit more stronger so you won't need as 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 it on high as the brulee torches but they're a great um, torch to have all right so I'll set up get the light turned off and uh, we'll start with that next section. Okay, so I'm just going to switch my, so just turn that on there and hit the ignition. It's going to drop the temperature of my flame right down. The great idea about this, and I know that it's a bit dark, is that which is this, the adjuster. It allows the airflow. So that's what's really important is the airflow and that's why I like these torches. So I've as I said turned the light out so you get to see a little better uh, what I'm doing with the piece here. So all I'm going to do is just go around very carefully, go around it and then what I'm going to do is just drop that down a little bit. I think my gas bottle is a little bit low. Okay, so I'm just going to go around, warm up the outer edge. Yes, yeah, so I just kind of excuse my torch. I am on the lower end of my gas bottle, so it's doing a little bit of a spit at the moment. Okay, so I'm just warming up my piece. Go around the outer edge. Don't hit directly uh, the flame straight onto your test piece. And just warm up. You've got to warm up and allow. Now I'm not turning on my stopwatch until such times that I start seeing a bit of smoke coming off it. So once a little smoke and then a little flame will come across it, that's the bioner burning off, which is it's just starting to happen right now. Okay, that's the smoke. May not be picking it up in the camera, but I can see it from here. And there's a little flash of flame that's beginning. As soon as that flame starts, here we go. I'll just move my torch away so you can see that. Alright, so which is fine. So now I can actually direct my torch straight on it and hit my starter. 
Right, we're going to start now. What's going to happen is that as that binder has completely burnt off, eh, you'll find your strip may rise, lift a little bit. That's completely normal, and then it will relax back down. So, which it has right now, as again, you may not see it quite well from the camera point. I can see it from this direction. So, just Keep your piece surrounded by a low flame. Don't want too much flame. Don't want, you know, like, don't want the torch full on, especially with these big ones. And uh, just want a nice low, low flame. And I'm going to take it between six to seven minutes, should be quite enough. Always do a little bit longer just in case and if the piece is bigger obviously I increase the time so increase the time depending on the size piece here um, and all you just need to do is just and if you're not getting any little hair cracks I look down the side through there okay so that's what you're looking for so pretty happy with that now if you and you can see there's a slight there's a slight sheen to it. I don't know if you can see the sheen on that. There's a little bit of a sheen. Now, but if you get to this where it's a quite shiny, you've gone too far and you should have pulled your torch back. Uh, I did this to demonstrate to show you that if you get to this real, real shine, you'll know that uh, what happened is you got that really kind of a, a glass um, look on it as you're torching it well and that's the outcome so when you get that real glass quickly um, pay really close attention and quickly move your torch back all right but you want something that's a little bit like in a satin so rather than shiny you want a satin a satin look it's not quite white but it's not it's not as shiny as this Okay, so that's that's kind of your two differences. So, uh, yeah, enjoy, have fun, do your bit of a testings first, and once you get the testings, get a, a hang of it. Do a couple little tiny little pieces until you feel that you're really comfortable and, and confident with it, and then um, go for it. Enjoy it, have a lot of fun so many things that you can create and design from there and maybe one time in in the near future you might end up looking at getting a kiln makes it a lot easier and um, having a consistent uh, firing but if it's not if it's not possible uh, doing a torch is, is equally as rewarding so the Next, what I'd like to share with you is, I've just got a little camp stove right here. Uh, they're reasonably inexpensive. And I'll just show you, there's a little test piece ready to go. And uh, we'll hit some around about the six to seven minutes. And then do a bend test. See how we go with that. So I'm just going to turn my stove on. And... You can warm it up by just dropping down the temperature a little, allowing that to burn off. And then once the binder has burned off, then you can raise the temperature. Keep a close eye on it because if I said as it 
starts to get a little bit shiny uh, little freckles on us is like a shine to it then it's getting too hot and you'll need to drop the temperature so play around with that all right so binders burnt off it's nice and quick and I have my stop clock on the side here counting away I have put it on the outer edge because that's where it tends to capture the most of the most of the temperature the flame in the center the the flames really not that intense the most flame is on the outer side of the ring so place it around the outside of the ring and again it might it um, might take you a couple of uh, goes to get the um, just moving that into the flame a little bit better and uh, and I may have to drop the temperature a little bit yeah she's getting a bit too hot now And um, you may have to give this a test run a couple of times and just so you know the height of the flame, the intensity of the heat that you've got. take it a little bit further I have one of these um, it's a, like a digital laser thermometer and uh, and you could actually they're not that expensive so you could just grab it out of the box you could use that as a good indicator so each time as long as you get that right temperature uh, you're all good to go so I'll just take it out and I'll show you it's pretty simple just trying to keep it away from the flame for you and all you do is hit the button on the back comes up to display and you push there's a button at the front here there's the instructions in the box and it will tell you what your temperature is running at within right on that area where your your piece is being fired so, and that's good, a good way to teach yourself what kind of temperature, what kind of flame, intensity of the flame that you actually need. But again, that's optional. If you're planning on not getting a kiln for quite some time, then I would definitely go with something like that. So I'll wait around about six minutes and then I'll do a a bin test. I'm just over the three minutes now. Okay, so after six minutes, I'm just going to bend that, just scrub it through your nose pliers, just put your finger on that and just run that around. Nice and easy, and there we go. Okay, so we've got a nice little bend on that. I could go more. Okay, so just double check, make sure that's your, that you've got a good bend on it. Uh, have fun. But do your tests. Once you get your test pieces, understand what temperatures within your flame. Uh, as I said, if you're not going to get a kiln, grab one of these and a little laser. As I said, they're reasonably inexpensive, and that'll teach you what kind of temperature you actually need to center the 
the um, the clay and uh, and you pretty much won't get a melt or you won't have much a great deal of problems in the future. Alright, have fun and I'll see you later. Bye for now.